For lab three, you're going to create a book review, which is going to allow you to use several text effects. This is a sample page of something that you might include in your book review. It has a lot of different options here for text, and what I want to do is go through what each one of them does. So I'm working in Firefox, and I'm going to right-click and select View Page Source. This will let me see how my source code was created. To make it easier to view, I'm hitting Control plus plus, which will increase the size of the font for the page. Now I've added a few things that aren't necessarily visible here. You can see I've got several tools. And you can see where my H1 tags are, my H2, my paragraphs. This just sort of breaks it down. I have a block quote here. And paragraphs, address. So you can see some of the elements coming up. It doesn't show everything, but it does show block level elements. So that you can see where I'm adding things in here. This is an unordered list, which is actually for navigation. So let's just take a look, comparing one thing, comparing the source code to the results. So again, we're using HTML5, so I'm using the doc type of HTML with a language of English. And in my head, I declare the Carset UTF-8, which is what we use in America, and the title is Lab 3 Book Review. And that shows up right here, Lab 3 Book Review. Then I have an ID, a div with an ID of container. I'm doing this to get you in the habit of containing everything, all of your content, into a container. Once we start using CSS, we can then put that container, set the maximum size, center it, change colors, do some cool formatting. Then I have the header, which is the masthead of my page, and inside of it I have a navigational structure with an unordered list, and this list has links to on-page references. So. Here I have my masthead, book review, and links, which will take me to on-page references. And that closes my header section. Then I have an article, and remember that an article could be pulled out of the page and republished elsewhere. And it has several sections which act as chapters. So I have H2 with an ID of plot, that's what this is linking to, and some information about the plot. Then I have characters, and you'll notice in the characters I'm actually using the definition here to set up the, to um, define these terms. Goddess of party, Poetry and Morrigan, Goddess of War. And the definition makes it appear as italics, but you could change styling on that later. You'll notice here I also have an abbreviation for the Celtic gods. I'm using the abbreviation here, and if we scroll over, you'll see that I use the abbreviation, and I use the title, which is what makes Celtic appear right there. Then I have my series, character series, author. I'm using strong to put an emphasis on Kevin Hearn. And then I talk about him and I put in a block quote. And apparently it doesn't like my closing my paragraph here. Mm, this is interesting. This, this is one of those funky things where it depends on how it's reading the rules because um, I can put a black quote in a paragraph but Firefox doesn't like it. So it's get, indicating that it considers this to be an error um, that there's a little quibbling on that. So you can have it in a paragraph or not. So in here I have a block quote. I've also added the quotes to make the quotes appear. And then I've used the cite option to cite my source, Kevin Hearn, from the book Hounded. Now I did capture this image, which for under fair use, this is an academic thing, and I'm referring to the actual book by Kevin Hearn, so it's generally considered appropriate to use the image of his cover when providing a review of his book. This is a figure 
and this is my figure caption. So I have my fig caption here. And then again, I'm having an issue here where it doesn't like me to have all of this in one paragraph. Again, I have some bad habits from um, working with HTML back since 1997 that has generally been allowed. And you'll see that it renders just fine. It's backwardly compatible. And then I have my address. This is my email address. And this should have, it's not providing it as a link. So I've got a minor error there. I'm going to show you how to correct that. And then I have my page published with the date and time or the published date, December 26, 2013. And I've put that in small, which refers to the fine print. And that's all in the footer. So let's go take a quick look at my errors. Now I prefer working with Dreamweaver. So I'm going to open up my index page. And you'll notice I have that hounded picture here inside of my folder. And I'll show you how I got that in a minute. Um, but I had a few errors that aren't showing up as errors in Dreamweaver. So here, my mail to should have been in a, the form of a link. So it's a href equals, I should have put that in quotes, nope, not two e's. Close this, and by name, and then close that. That should update that to make it a link. Okay, that's good. Now, it was not happy with my paragraph here. That I'm starting here, so this should simply close at this point. And it also did not like the paragraph surrounding the block quote. So we'll just get rid of that. And that shouldn't really impact the way that it looks. Now in Dreamweaver I can now save this and I can just choose put and that will upload it. And when you're checking these to see if your changes worked, you need to make sure to refresh. And that appears to have worked. And if I view my page source, I should not have any errors. Okay, so that's a little bit of how to change things, re-upload, check to see if you have errors, and I will have a separate video on how to get a screen capture to get the cover for your, um, your own book review.